Hi everybody, welcome to the Dobbin Art Studio in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. My name is Georgia Dobbin and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the brand new Deerfoot Stippler from Global Art Supply and I'm going to demonstrate how you use this little guy. I'm going to be demonstrating using the Heritage Multimedia Acrylics and I'm going to be demonstrating on a nice little uh, holiday painting that I'm doing. The um, Deerfoot Stippler is available in two sizes, the 3 8 inch and the 1 quarter inch. And I'm going to be using the 3 8 inch today. It's made out of a synthetic squirrel hair and it's the same hair that are in the watercolor line of the uh, Global Art Supply brushes and they're really wonderful. They hold lots of moisture and lots of paint. You get lots of working time. Now, to load this brush, <coughs> I like to give it a little pre-dampen in some water and then I like to just dry it on my towel so there's not too much left in there. Then I like to just sort of fan it out a little bit just to make sure I haven't got any water droplets in there that are going to surprise me later. I also like to fan it out so the hair doesn't stick together and I get very nice fine pinprick um, texture. Um, my surface today has a lot of ultramarine and burnt umber and red violet in it so I have decided that I'm going to mix I'm going to stipple in Santa's cap and I'm going to pick up just with the toe of my brush a little bit of um, ultramarine blue and notice how I'm just sort of pulling it back and I'm putting the, the paint in my brush. I'm not treating this brush as though it were a shovel. The paint needs to get into the hair so that I can accurately predict what's going to happen when I touch it to my surface. I'm going to touch into just a little bit of red violet. This is going to darken my, my color and just move it over a little bit to the violet hue. It also darkens the value. And I'm going back and forth and I'm working that paint into the hairs. I've also got some um, burnt umber in my design so I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of burnt umber just to tone this a little bit. And again I'm just working it back and forth and in. Now before I go to my surface I do like to just touch it down on my palette gently just to make sure and to see exactly what's going to happen. You can play with the consistency and viscosity of this paint until your heart's desire. You may want it thinner. I like the paint pretty much the way it is out of the tube when I'm stippling. Again stippling is one of those things that pressure of your uh, hand on the application of the hair is going going to determine um, how light and lacy your uh, end result is. If you press really hard, you're going to end up with almost opaque coverage. If you press very and just touch it very, very lightly, you will end up with little footprints. Now the deer foot is shaped like a deer's hoof. We have the toe, which is the longer end of the hair, and the heel, which is the uh, shorter end. And I just like to touch it back so that the the um, heel is facing me and the toe is up. That allows me to double load that brush too if I want to and I'll show you that technique in a minute. So we're going to go on over to my Santa, bring him over and we're going to add a nice furry rim to his hat and I'm just going to start to touch in and I like to hold my brush fairly far back on the handle and just touch it I'm getting a nice lacy look and I'm not going for completely opaque. I want a little bit of the background to show through because I think it would be interesting and it adds some more texture. I'm just gently rocking it back and forth a little bit so that I don't end up with a definite pattern or footprint on my design. Variety adds interest. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly touch, deposit less and less paint so it just blurs out into the background. The darkest area of my design is going to be next to, the darkest area of my fur is going to be next to his forehead. So I'm just going to work that area a little bit more. And now I'm going to add some white to this. <coughs> I 
just lighten it up a little and start to put on my next layer. Wonderful thing about this paint is it dries fairly quickly. I'm working with a dirty brush. It's adding some nice texture. I like at this point to add a little bling to Santa. So I'm going to just pinch wipe my brush and then I'm going to touch into some of the new gold. This gold is so pretty. It's very opaque. It's very thick. Can you see how thick that paint is? Touch in. I'm going to work it into my bristles. And just touch. I'm going to add a little gold to Santa. And I'm just touching it very lightly. Again, the amount of pressure that you um, put on your brush is going to determine the amount of paint that you deposit on your surface. It's one of those things that takes practice and it's honestly very subjective and it depends on what you like and what effect you're going for on your painting at that particular moment. Now I'm going to pinch wipe my brush once more and I'm going to go into some straight white. I don't want to cover up all my lovely colors underneath. I want to make sure I can still see through them, but I do want the idea that Santa's hat has some white fur. So I can just touch it down. So really, when you're loading this brush, you're going to load it very gently. You're not swirling or swishing. You're just loading it as though you were loading a normal flat, which is to say you're going to Touch your toe into your paint and then you're going to gently work the paint into the bristles of your brush. You do not want to treat this brush like a shovel. You want to be able to accurately predict how that paint is going to land on your surface. The amount of pressure is going to determine how much coverage you get. If you press really hard, you're going to get opaque coverage. If you press very lightly, you're going to get lacy, light lacy. And then you just sort of tap and fill in. I like to hold my brush a little bit further back on the handle than I normally would and that allows me, I also like to hold it between my fingers, which allows me uh, to rotate it a little bit and to uh, vary the um, angle at which I'm depositing the paint. I prefer to have the heel of my brush facing me and the toe facing out. Oh, I promised I'd show you some double loading, didn't I? Now, the way I would double load this, I've already got some, some nice red violet in my, in my brush. Now I'm just going to touch just the toe into the remainder of my white on my global palette here. And you can see that it's just on the toe tip. And when I pounce, now when I pounce, I'm leaving a lovely little... Um, footprint that contains the red violet on the bottom and the white at the top. This is great for doing bushes so that you can do your highlight and your uh, main value, your middle mid value all at the same time. Um, if you're a production painter, again, this is a really fast way to get a painting done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this very short demonstration and eventually you'll see Santa all completed. Thanks for uh, painting with me today.